Do you know that feeling when you load your photos into Lightroom and they're not quite as good as what you thought they were going to be? Morning everybody, great to see you all again and Happy New Year. Well, I did quite a lot of photography over the um, Christmas and New Year period, but I have to admit, I failed more than I succeeded. And I'm sure it feels familiar when you go into Lightroom, you're really excited about the photos because there's been some good light or you've been to a good location, you open up and you just go, oh, <laughs> you, just, you just look at the screen, you just think, oh, they're just not what I expected at all. But I think once you get over that initial disappointment, then there's always something that you can learn from your photographs. There's always something to get out of those initial disappointments that you have when you open them in the Lightroom. Now, I'm not saying it's as good as getting a good photo, but I don't think you should dis just dismiss them. And this was, I had a really good example of this on, I think it was New Year's Day actually, yeah, it was New Year's Day where I went to do some photography with my daughter and we, the, it, for once it looked like the light was gonna be good because we've had a lot of really gray, dull days, which I got some okay photos in, but it was nice to have some really nice golden light at sunset. So me and my daughter headed out and um, I thought I'll record a video of this as well. My daughter was quite keen to help, so we, we went out together and made this video, which I'm gonna show you now. And I'll show you the photos, although as you can imagine, I, I, from the title of the video, I was disappointed with them. But I'll show you the video, I'll show you the photos. It's quite a short video, because I, I ended up not taking a lot of B-roll or, or it didn't really come into anything because I was rushing around doing so many things, which was the main problem. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the photos and maybe how you can improve your photography a little bit by looking at those disappointments and how certainly I'm gonna get something out of those photos. So here we go. Right, so I'm in a completely new location and it's a bit weird when you get to a new location, I've got to admit, because you don't have a clue where to go, what you're shooting, but it's really exciting and you can see these stone walls are everywhere. So I found a spot up here that I looked at on the map earlier and I'm gonna go down this footpath up here, just gonna get my bag. And as I said before, I don't think that I'm gonna get a fantastic shot, although it is quite nice conditions, but I'm just, it's great to just explore somewhere really new. And yeah, it's just gonna be fun just to see what's here and see what we can find. Just get all my stuff out. <laughs> So I'm actually really excited about this now. There's so many stone walls here. I found a really good spot. And as I said, it's, it took about 40, 45 minutes to get here. And I generally have never been here before. And I, I found this sort of old barn here and there's a few other old barns behind. So there must be a good composition to find with these. Now, it looks like I'm gonna get a good sunset as well. So I've probably got about maybe 45 minutes an hour to try and find a composition. So I'm gonna wander around this area and see what I can find. But I'm definitely gonna include one of these barns in the shop. Oh, I'm so glad I came out. By the way, Happy New Year, everybody. Stood on your sh oh no. Definitely don't stand on your daughter's pink gloves when she's the camera operator, otherwise the camera will be wobbly. Okay, so we just walked around the barn now and I found quite a nice scene here with these two trees in the distance and this other one tree here. Um, and I've come a little bit up the hill to try and see if I can get, get this shot in. Unfortunately, the sun's just gone a little bit hazy, but it looks really nice and I've got it 
on it's 64 millimeters on the 50r so that works out around probably around about 50 50 millimeters i've got it on f11 and simple as that two second timer should look good So I've just been running around, as you can see the light is amazing, I've been running around up and down the hills trying to find a composition that I just couldn't find, which is what happens when you don't know the area very well, but what I do know is I am definitely going to come back here, it looks absolutely amazing. The sun on these walls and these shadows is so, so stunning. What I've been trying to find is, that is somewhere where I can get close to a wall to get that leading line in and have depth to the image. But I've got something that's pretty good behind me with that barn that we're at, I was at just before. I've actually got back in my car and driven down the road now, hence why I'm hand-holding this camera, which is not great, but I can put it on the wall. So I'm going to take this shot, and then I'm just going to drive a little bit further up and see if I can get something over there. The clouds are just so beautiful. It just looks so, so beautiful. So the best way to explain that evening was that it was probably just a little bit too hectic and whenever I do a video it's always fairly hectic and quite often I do a video in new locations but I'd research those locations a lot more and I have a definite idea of what I'm going to shoot. In this particular case I'd gone to just try and find and shoot a new location. That was my sort of New Year's resolution. I wanted to go out and find new locations. So it was good that I went to this place. Um, you know, that was a really, really positive, but ultimately the images didn't work. So let's just have a quick look and I'll, I'll explain why and, and go over a little bit more about what you can learn from this. So this first one was the one where I saw these two trees and I thought it was really, really good. Um, you know, I was really excited by these walls, but as you can see, there's a big reason why why it doesn't work, and and this tree is is, is the main one, and and then da down in this area here. So if we just look at this area, then this is just too complicated. There's too much going on, and it just drags your eye um, to that side. If I just scroll over and move over to this side of the image, you can see that there's definitely something better going on here. I've got separation between these trees in the background because they're further away. The light. It, 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 it's more, they're more backlit, so um, the light is 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 more hazy on on the distant hills here, and then there's some really interesting things going on here with the sheep and and these trees up here. If I'd have spent a little bit longer, and, and this is the same with all the images, and it's something that I preach about all the time about staying in one location, and just spending a long, long, long time trying to find that composition. If it had done that then I would have found this composition here and I've concentrated more, probably gone um, a little bit further to the left and, and shot through these trees, so these distant trees in the background. That's where, that's where the composition was in this shot. So I just missed it really. Going on to the next image that I took, which I didn't show in the video, which is this one. So I was, we were at the top of the hill and, and again, we, we had this amazing light and these brilliant clouds, you know, when the clouds are dark and you've got this golden light on the trees, you just get overexcited, which is what I did here. So, <laughs> so these trees just look really good. Um, and I try to find a composition with these trees on the left, these trees on the right, and these trees in the middle. But again, I just don't think it works. I think these are just too messy. Um, it's the same with a lot of the, these images, that there's just too much going on. But I, th I think again, if, if I zoom in, um, probably not that far, you can see that I think the composition's probably more with these set of trees here because they've got similar shapes, you know, these two trees and these two trees. So if I'd have maybe gone up a little bit to the left a little bit, I think that would have, I would have found something a little bit better there. 
So then going on to this image, which is where I'd got back to my car, we tried to find something a little bit different. We had more amazing golden light. I was flying my drone, which was again, pro probably in hindsight a daft thing to do, but I'll get onto that in a minute because I did get some good things from that. I tried to shoot this this wall and, and use it as a leading line, but I just I just failed completely because I should have what I should have done is walked down to the wall a little bit closer and then got some really good foreground interest of this wall and, and the, the detail of the wall leading to this hut in the background. But unfortunately what I've done here is I, I've I've not really got any strong foreground, I've just got mid ground with the wall and then I thought these trees would just work and, and this barn and it just doesn't. It just looks messy. It's exactly the same with this image here. Um, you know, I've got the wall, which is interesting, and then these trees, but the trees are just a little bit messy. Your eye doesn't really know where to go on this image. If I'd have gone in um, a little bit tighter, you know, maybe I could have found a composition was, that was a little bit better. You know, may, may, maybe there was something, I don't really like this tree here, but maybe there was something a little bit tighter like that. I mean, ironically, this, this image, um, if I, I was messing about with it when I was just producing this video. If you, if you crop it into a letterbox format, so if I go down to about here, I think it works a lot better because you're quite you're, you're a little bit more zoomed in on on the image. So these become slightly better subjects than the little dots they were when when you had the sky as well. I was attracted to the sky to begin with, but but actually I think it works better as a letterbox image. But because there's a lot going on again and your eye doesn't really know where to land, it's it's you know it's a five out of ten probably. So really the conclusion is that I didn't give myself enough time in this new location and then I tried to do too much so I didn't really concentrate on one composition. It's all the things that I talk about all the time in my videos that I just failed to do myself. Um, but it happens, it happens quite a lot, you know, I, I show you a lot of my videos that are the, are the good photos but, you know, I feel like I should show you the, the failures and the times I go out that don't work as well because that happens probably more than when I go out and get a successful photo. Um, and then I was in that position where, you know, I'd gone out for a couple of hours because I didn't think my daughter would probably want to spend more than two hours listening to a dad talk to a camera. Um, and um, anybody that's not massively into photography gets bored when you just try and, and um, work a composition a little bit. So I probably failed a little bit in, in that respect as well. But the most important thing is that I had a fantastic time. It was great to be out with my daughter. Luckily, I brought chocolate, so that, that worked quite well. <laughs> But what I did find out was this location is a fantastic location to go back to. You can see by this drone footage here, it is so amazing. There's going to be an amazing composition that I can find maybe around this hut, maybe with the stone walls, maybe with finding a good separation of trees. But certainly, you know, sunrise or sunset, this is going to be a really good location to go back to. So I'm going to go back and visit this area, which is the southern sort of peak district, which I've not shot a lot before. The other thing is, I got a couple of really good drone shots. So when I was doing the video with the, with the drone, I found some good angles there. And I got these two shots. So this first one, I was super, super pleased with. It just worked really well. I was higher up and I got what I was hoping for, which was the shadow of this tree and, and the, you know, the, shad the long shadows and then just the golden light on the barn. And because I was on, on my drone, I had more freedom to get into a composition. So because I didn't have time to move to that composition on my feet, the drone helped that a lot. And that's quite often what drone photography is good for when you, you don't have as much time. And then another one I got was, again, the, the light just hitting the side of the, of the hill here. And you can see the shadow and light here just works really, really well. And this road just going down into the distance. So I was really pleased with those. And what I want to do is try and create things, shots like that, um, but with my, with my camera. So getting to the right vantage point to be able to get those types of shots. But that's it. Um, I hope that's been helpful. I hope that you've gain something out of this and hope that when you do look at some disappointing Lightroom shots, which we all do, that you think, actually, I'm gonna learn a little bit from these and it doesn't dishearten you too much. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks ever so much for watching. Until next week, bye. <laughs>